Drowning in GitLab menus, YAML files, and cryptic pipeline errors? Yeah, you're not the only one. The whole world of automated software delivery can feel insanely complex. What if you could go from fumbling your way through your first repository to deploying code like a pro, becoming the undisputed hero of your team's workflow? Well, in this video, that's exactly what we're going to do. I'm going to give you the very essentials to get up and running fast. My name is Matt, and I've helped a ton of developers get a handle on their tools. Today, I'm going to guide you step-by-step step from zero to DevOps Hero. So here's the game plan. First, we're laying out the groundwork by creating our very first GitLab project and repository. Then we'll be getting into the art of teamwork by mastering merge requests, the heart of collaboration in GitLab. After that, we'll bring some order to the chaos with GitLab's planning tools, linking our tasks directly to our code. And finally, the main event. We're going to build our very own CI-CD pipeline from scratch. Before we can automate anything, our code needs a home. In GitLab, that home is called a project. But don't think of GitLab as just a place to dump your code. It's a full-on DevOps platform in a single app, built to handle the entire software development lifecycle. At the heart of every project is a Git repository. It's where your code, your files, and all your version history get stored. Let's make one right now. Depending on whether you've been in here before, you will want to click Create Project. Alternatively, browse to the desired group that you want to create the project and click View Project. Create Blank Project and give your project a name. In case, I will call it Demo Web App. And leave the visibility as private. Internal means that only logged in users can see it. Public means that anyone can view it without any authentication. We will select Initialize with a README, which will create a template README file in your repository. Click Create Project again, and we should be brought to the project screen. As you can see, it's been populated with a template README file. And it's as simple as that. Now you have a repository in GitLab, ready to push code to, ready to share with your colleagues to co collaborate on building applications. And now if we click the blue code button up here, we'll get two URLs. These URLs will be used to clone the repository down into your local machine. And then you can begin editing and push any changes up. We want to clone a repository using this HTTPS URL here. What we're gonna do first is go over to preferences, click on access tokens, Add a new token, call this local dev, I'm gonna give this read repository, write repository, and that's it for now. Over the course of the next couple of days, create token, go back over to our demo web app project, go to code, home with HTTPS, open up your IDE or your terminal, git, clone, and the URL. We'll ask for a username. In my case, my GitLab username is that. And the token is the one we copied earlier on. I'll bring that over here. And you can see it's cloning it into this folder. It's created this folder, demo web app. This demo web app folder contains the readme that is in the repository. All right, let's add our first file. In this case, nothing complicated. We'll do a simple hello text file, hello merge ready and we will save it. Now you can see my IDE is set up with Git, so it can tell that this is green, this is a new file. If it's orange, it will be a modified file, and if it's white or not highlighted, that means it's existing file that hasn't changed compared to what's in Git currently. Now I'll change directory into the actual repository. I will add the text file. I will write a commit, an inline message saying added, hello, text. So this is added it to Git. You can see that that one file has changed. It's been inserted. It's the hello world text and git push. And if we head on back over to GitLab, you can see we refresh. There we have it. We've got our hello text here with hello merge ready. But now that's it. We've created a project with a repository inside. We've pulled that down locally. We've created a file. We've made changes and we've pushed those files, those changes back up to GitLab. Nice and simple so far. Working by yourself is fine, but DevOps is a team sport. And the single most important tool for teamwork in GitLab is the merge request, or MR. An MR is how you propose changes, ask for feedback, and get your code reviewed before it gets added to the main code base. This process is absolutely critical for keeping your code quality high. Let's see how it works. Okay, so if we open terminal and git Checkout minus B, Matt feature one. So this creates a new branch called Matt feature one. Now what we're going to do is make some changes to this file. Once we save that, hit add, 
Add dot just adds everything within the uh, current directory that needs to be added. Uh, git mit minus m update hello dot text file with merge ready information. Finally, we'll do git push and now it will give you the command to set the upstream to the new branch that we created. Paste that in password. And if we head on over to the repository tab, see we've got this nice banner at the top here saying that we've pushed changes and we'll create merge requests. Click on create merge request. You can see the title defaults to the MIT message that we entered earlier on. Give this a message. Updating our location. I would assign this to myself. There is no one around, so I won't get any reviewers. As you can see here, approval is optional. This can be set up to allow specific code owners to approve merge requests for you. When you click approve, you see that it's been approved and merge. And as you can see here, you get a full timeline of the merge request. It was assigned to me, it was approved, it was merged, and that's it. Okay, so we can push our code and collaborate on changes, but how do we keep track of what we're supposed to be doing in the first place? A hero needs a plan, right? Well, GitLab isn't just for code, it's also for planning. On the left-hand sidebar, we can see we've got that. Under plan, we have issues. You can click new issue, and we can say the text in hello is wrong. Create this issue. I'm going to assign this to myself and give it labels if we have any labels. So now we've got this issue created, we will head over to our code. We will uh, git checkout main, puts us back on our main branch. We will pull the changes. Those are the changes that we just made. And then we'll create a new branch. And what we'll do is we'll name this one, the issue number that we just created, dash x dash hello and what we will do is we don't want to say who it's hosted by now we'll do git add hello text git commit uh, fix hello and git push again we can just copy this helpful little command here paste that straight up and then if we go over to gitlab you can see here in the issue that we have one fix hello that has been assigned to this ticket was the ticket number number one which you can see over here is connected by this prefix that we've named the branch prefixing with one as matches the ticket number one now if we go back to merge requests we create a merge request for this one that's come in close is one so we can see that it's automatically populated this field because the branch name matches the issue Closes one means that once this is merged, it should close the issue that we had created. So we will delete the source branch and we'll leave all of that. We do an approval just to uh, show that it's been approved by myself. Obviously, you wouldn't be approved your own merge requests in real life. Click merge and there we go. That's been merged. And if we go over to issues, the issue has gone. Now in the close tab, because it was connected to the merge request, it's been automatically closed. We're about to get to the most powerful part of GitLab. If you're finding this guide useful, do me a solid and hit the subscribe button. I put out content like this all the time to help you level up your skills, and it would be awesome to have you in the community. Welcome to the main event. This is where we get to the really powerful stuff. CICD stands for Continuous Integration and Continuous Deployment. In simple terms, it's about automating your build, test, and deployment process, so you can ship software faster and more reliably. In GitLab, this is all controlled by one single file, the GitLab CI YAML. If we go back over to our code, we will clear this screen. We will CD, oh, no way. We'll go back over to main. We will pull, we will now git checkout minus b add pipeline. Now we're going to create a new file which is unique to GitLab called the dot GitLab GitLab CI dot YAML. Let's go over this file. So we've created a GitLab CI dot YAML file. And in that file, first of all, we've defined the stages. These stages are what's going to be used throughout the pipeline for each of the jobs. You can have multiple jobs run within the same stage. In this instance, I've just got three jobs, one per stage. We have the build job that uses the build stage. It runs a script. It artifacts the build directory. It'll only run if the main branch is the one that's received the changes. And the same with the test. 
except we've also got this dependencies attribute which will make sure that it only runs if the build job runs too. And same for the deploy job, this will only run if the test deploy job is run. And that's pushed up. Back over to GitLab now, if we go to code, repositories, we've got this create merge request. We can create a merge request, we can assign it to me. And there we go. We are ready to merge, we'll merge that in. Excellent. And now what we'll do is we'll go over to the build step, the build tab on the left, click on pipelines. And we can see here, we have this pipeline running. It's because the CI file that we added was pushed into main, and that is a push. Therefore, it's gonna run all the jobs. See here, we've got build, test, and deploy. Click into the job here. And we can see the build test goes first and the test then the deploy. You might be asking, wait, where's this actually running? GitLab uses something called runners. These are just agents that pick up and execute the jobs in your pipeline. If you're on gitlab.com, you get free access to a fleet of shared runners, so you don't even have to think about it to get started. You just created and ran your first automated CICD pipeline. Every single time anyone pushes a new commit this pipeline will run to make sure that the changes get built and tested. That is the power of CICD. So this automation is awesome, but we can't just let it run in the wild. We need some rules to govern it. GitLab lets you set policies to protect your important branches and make sure the quality stays high. The first thing we want to look at is the branch rules. See here, we've got the main branch which is default and protected. You can add branch roles here. Uh, for example, you can say dev slash star, create a branch rule for that. And you can say that only certain roles are allowed to merge into that given branch. So if we have dev slash feature one, dev slash feature two, only maintainers are allowed to do it. You want to disable force push. You don't want to allow people to force push their code into a protected branch. We go back over to repository here. So we've looked at branch rules and protected branches. And here we can see the branch rules again in a little, in a simpler format where we can configure each of these settings to whichever branches we need to based on roles that are created. Protected tags will enable us to prevent certain people from creating release tags. Tags, when they're added to code, can trigger releases, so we want to make sure that we've only got the right people creating those tags. Next, if we head over to merge requests, sometimes you'll want to squash commits. This will squash all of the commits from a given um, book, and it will enable you to just put one commit message for all of those commits to try and keep that git history in the main branch clean uh, merge checks so here uh, a pipeline must succeed in order for you to be able to merge your merge request all threads must be resolved so if someone's done a review on your code any comments that they've added must be resolved before you can merge your merge request and here you've got some nice templates that you can use to populate your merge request by default another thing to look at is the secure tab if you have some of the higher level plans, you'll be able to access the compliance center and policies. Policies you can create to control what happens within your environment. Uh, we can have merge request approval policies, which dynamically check who needs to approve a merge request. Or pipeline execution policies, which enforce code stages across all pipelines. Scan execution policies to run SAS, DAST, etc. Vulnerability management policies to remove any vulnerabilities that are detected and then no longer detected in following scans. Go to go to the compliance center, frameworks, new framework in here. These requirements check each of your environments across all projects to make sure that they are adhering to these certain requirements. It provides a dashboard to tell you if things are compliant or not. For example, preventing pushes, uh, force pushes, ensuring DAS scans run, assuring Auth is enabled. There's about 50 of these at the moment. Each requirement can have five controls. Then another video on this, I'll link it um, to go through execution policies and all of these requirements and controls. You started with literally nothing. Now you've created a project, you're managing code with branches, collaborating with merge requests, organizing your work with issues, and you've built a fully automated CI/CD pipeline. You have a roadmap. You now have the power to build, test, and deliver software with confidence. You've gone from zero to DevOps hero. Of course, this is just scratching the surface. The world of CI/CD is massive. You can set up your pipelines to deploy your apps to servers, build and publish Docker images, run security scans, and so much more. Now go build something awesome and don't forget, stay merge ready.